Hey everybody, Will from Studio Zombie 3D here. Today I'm taking a look at the Artillery Sidewinder X4 Plus. This is a really solid 300 by 300 by 400 millimeter printer with a top print speed of 500 millimeters a second. It also comes equipped with a 300 degree high temperature nozzle as well as all metal linear rails on the X and Y axis. It also comes with two leveling methods. The manual leveling method where you can adjust the six different bed screws as well as a 121 point auto level. Let's get right into it. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get everything out of the box. The first thing we're going to pull out here is our accessory package with all of our tools, assembly screws and accessories that come with the printer. Next up we have our user manual as well as a quick start guide which explains your manual and auto leveling. Next up we have two little pieces of paper that you can use for setting the Z offset. A regular piece of 8.5 by 11 printer paper will work as well. Next up we have our filament spool holder. And then we have our filament runout sensor. Next we have the back carbon fiber support rods. These add a little bit of rigidity to the uprights to make sure you don't get any wobble in some of those taller prints. And here we have our color touch screen. Next we can go ahead and remove some of this packaging foam so we can remove the upright gantry. And here we have our 300 degree all metal hot end. Next we can go ahead and remove the rest of the packing foam so that we can get the base of the printer out. As well as our power cable here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get everything all laid out on the table to see what all comes with the printer. And here we have everything from the Artillery Sidewinder X4 Plus out on the table. Here again is our reinforcing carbon fiber rods for the back of the uprights. And here we have a small glue stick as well as lubricant and grease. As well as our power cable, our touch screen, the touch screen mount, as well as all of our assembly screws, the tools that we need to assemble the printer, a spare length of Bowden tube as well as a spare nozzle. Next up we have our filament runout sensor as well as our filament spool holder. And again here we have our leveling paper as well as our instruction manuals and our quick start guide for the leveling system. And here we have our user manual with our setup guide as well as how to get the printer started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our gantry installed onto the base. To do this, we're going to have to remove two zip ties from the upright gantry. This so we can move the gantry up a bit to fit it on the base. Now we're going to go ahead and get the base on that side so we can install the upright gantry. It's always a good idea to have an extra set of hands to give you a hand if you need with this. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to repeat this on the opposite side. Make sure everything is square and really tight when you're done.
Once we have our gantry secured, we're going to go ahead and install our braces. Simply use the screw supplied as well as the washer to attach the brace to the top. You might want to leave it a little loose until you have everything installed and ready. That way you can make any slight adjustments you need to the brace. And then we're going to repeat this on the opposite side. Again with the bottom, we're going to go ahead and install with the spacer, but we're not going to completely tighten it down until we have the length just right. Once we've completed installing the back braces, we can go ahead and make sure all the motors and the wires are plugged in. Now we can go ahead to the front of the printer, install the Wi-Fi antenna as well as the touchscreen bracket. Simply screw the Wi-Fi antenna into place, and then use two supplied screws to install the bracket for the touchscreen. Next, all we have to do is plug in the touchscreen and slide it into the cradle. There's a magnetic plate in here that'll hold it into place. Now on the back side of the printer, we're going to go ahead and we're going to install the cables on the side, as well as the cable going into our hot end. I like to make sure it's in place and locked tightly, and then I like to slide the hot end to the far side of the gantry, just to make sure I have enough clearance with the cables when it's on the far side during printing. With the hot end on the far side, I'm going to go ahead and install the cable clip now, making sure I have enough room for the hot end to move freely. And now we're moving into the final steps. The last thing we're going to have to do is install the filament spool holder. This uses two screws on the top of the printer. And next we simply attach the cable into our filament runout sensor and then install the sensor onto the spool holder.
Now that we have everything attached, we can go ahead and power on the printer. There's a quick setup process you go through when you first power it on. This will walk you through manually leveling and then auto leveling the bed. It'll take a few minutes for the hot and the heat up, but once it's ready, you can go ahead and adjust the bed manually. When it comes to manually leveling a printer bed, I like to go around to all the different points a couple times just to make sure everything's fairly level. The auto level will compensate for most of it, but it's always good to get it as flat as you can before. Once you've completed the manual leveling process, you can go ahead with the auto level. The first thing you're going to have to do is adjust the Z offset. Simply click Z equals zero on the screen and the hot end will lower. Then using the buttons on screen, slowly lower it until you can get a bit of friction on your piece of paper. Once you have your offset set, you're going to go ahead and click next. This will save the offset and then initiate the auto leveling process. It's going to go through 121 points on the bed. It takes a few minutes for it to complete, but it gets a really nice map of the bed. And here we have the main interface on the Sidewinder X4 Plus. They have a really nice simple to use and follow menu. There's also a web interface you can use for accessing and uploading prints. All in all, you have everything you need here to get prints going and set up your printer. The resinous compensation is set from factory. It doesn't come with the accelerometer sensor built in, so you can't run the test unless you purchase an accelerometer from Artillery themselves. I had an accelerometer from one of my other printers, so I was able to plug it into the main board and run the test.
And here we have the X4 Plus printing. This is just a simple Z wobble test and it came out really clean on here. The back rails and the uprights really keep things stable as it moves up. All the prints I did during my review I did at 300 millimeters a second. This is Polymaker Pink PLA and this is a unicorn from Twisty Prints. I can't be happier with the results of this at 300 millimeters a second. And here we have a Sasquatch, also from Twisty Prints, this time in Sunlu Yellow PLA. All the joints move freely and there's no problems with any of the print. Super happy with how the X4 Plus handled this at 200%. And finally we have a Woolly Mammoth, again from Twisty Prints. This one came out really nice at 200% and it all fit together well and everything's snug. If you're looking for a printer, the Artillery X4 Plus is really one worth checking out. Thanks for watching everybody, that was my review of the X4 Plus of my artillery. Be sure to like and subscribe for more from Studio Zombie 3D. Take care and we'll see you again.